Forward TV. The world is thinking. What to me was the central drama and problem of the Bible, which is that God is so incredibly difficult. Um, the Hebrew Bible, that is. Uh, well, well, we can talk more about that. But, uh, you know, he has no self-esteem problems. He's always going around calling himself just uh, merciful and compassionate, and yet he is very rarely just merciful or compassionate. And he can't go, a, you know, more than a page or two without smiting someone unreasonably, usually. <laughs> you bring him the wrong incense, smiting. Complain about the manna, smiting. Question Moses' authority, smiting. Mock Moses' wife, leprosy. <laughs> Build a golden calf, big time smiting. You know, date a Midianite girl, smiting. So, you know, there are these moments of great mercy and, and, and glory from him. But I think, you know, in the Hebrew Bible, there are too many genocides. There are too many collective punishments. For example, there's one, one um, moment which really disturbed me in the book of Daniel, which is that the prophet Daniel has escaped from the lion's den uh, unharmed because God has protected him. And... Now, this isn't strictly the Lord doing it, but the Lord does seem to license it. Uh, and after he's freed from the lion's den, what happens is that the, the men who falsely accuse Daniel, as well as their innocent wives and children, are tossed into the lion's den. And, the, and, the, and the, the, the verse says, they had hardly reached the bottom of the den when the lions crushed all their bones. And so again and again, I found myself in the odd position of rooting against God, which was very disturbing. And when I complained to religious friends about how much he dismayed me, I usually got one of two responses from Christians um, would say, well, yes, but this is all set up for the New Testament. And, you know, reading the Old Testament is like leaving halfway through the movie and I'm missing a happy ending. <laughs> and that if I want to find grace and forgiveness and wonder, I have to, you know, read and learn the story of Jesus and which will, will explain and redeem this all. And I think, and this clearly has been, I mean, this is very successful. I mean, Christianity is proof that this is a very persuasive argument. And, and I suppose if I were a different person and if I weren't sort of felt myself deeply Jewish, um, that it might work on me, but it doesn't. I'm a Jew, and I feel that I can't and don't believe that Christ died for my sins. Um, and even if he did, I don't think that would excuse these crimes of the Lord's in the Old Testament. So the second response comes from comes more often from Jews who razz me for missing the, the, you know, what they see as the chief lesson of the Hebrew Bible, which is that we can't hope to understand the ways of God, and that that you know when we judge Him as cruel and petty, perhaps we're, you know, we just don't get it. Uh, and it, this one also doesn't resonate with me deeply. And I I find myself finding that I I feel like I have several unappealing options. Option one is there's no God. Option two is there's a the awful vindictive God of the Bible. And option three is there's some vague creator who's not remotely attached to the events of the Bible, who didn't really do any of the things that are ascribed to him in the Bible and thus can't be held responsible for any of them. And all of these seem to me sort of unsatisfying in one way. So I was trying to argue my way out of this. Um, and I realized that what had happened to me as I was reading the Bible was this, was that I felt that it had put me on high alert. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't get closer to God in the sense of, you know, believing more deeply in a deity or having an experience of the transcendent. But mostly, you know, I, so I came to the Bible sort of hoping to be inspired and awed by it. And sometimes I was, but mostly I was just in a fight with it. Mostly I was arguing with, with God about things. You know, why are you killing these innocent Egyptian children? What have they done that, that you you know, sort of take pleasure, or at least don't have any, seem to have any qualms about killing them. Um, you know, what, we know, what wrong did we do that we, that we deserve the flood? Where does that come from? Um, and it occurred to me as I was doing this argument that, that, and forgive the gross generalization here, but that this kind of argument explains why Jews are the way we are, which is that um, it doesn't seem to me a surprise that Jews thrive in the argumentative professions. <laughs> Because I think that, you know, the whole purpose of the Hebrew Bible is to argue with it. And the history of Judaism, and it's a history I do not know at all, but as people tell me about it, you know, this the Talmudic tradition, the, the tradition of, you know, sort of scholarship and commentary about the Bible and then commentary about the commentary about the commentary. Um, 
is the story of Jews trying to argue their way through a very difficult, confusing, and messy book about a demanding, mysterious, and erratic God. 